I really like this piano. Sorry, I've been just like kind of sitting here before I started recording, just listening to it. Like, no joke. <laughs> it's just so good. Anyways, we are in Tsubaki's chapter now. Uh, aptly named Mirror. I wonder what that's supposed to entail. Uh, so we kind of saw Tsubaki slowly transforming herself into a character like Kyosuke, and Kyosuke was really proud of himself for having accomplished that. But there at the end, as soon as she started kind of beating up on her brother, and realizing that this is totally out of character for her, not what she wants, that she cares for her family deeply and doesn't want to take out her frustrations on them, we saw her kind of try to change back to the person she was before. I wonder where this route's going to go from here. Now, are we going to see her just kind of go back to the person she was, and then we're going to kind of change to match her personality more? Uh, or maybe we'll see something a little bit different. Uh, I believe this is going to be the good ending. There's like a good ending and a bad ending for each of the routes. Maybe the bad ending would have had her kind of continue down that path, and this good ending is going to be more of a romance type thing. Uh, I'm excited for that. I was curious how they were going to kind of uh, proceed with where it was going uh, with her personality change, but uh, I'm kind of glad she's kind of resorting back to who she was. Come in. Nine p.m. The swirling snow stopped. After a brief consultation session with a local firm, I went to Sabaki's house and brought her over. Would you like some coffee? Yeah. Really? I looked away idly. Yeah, the trains were cancelled everywhere. Yep. The silence continued. A request? Her eyes shifted to the paperwork she had been going through earlier. I already understood. Don't worry about it. This is about the work I gave you, right? You don't need to help out if you don't want to. This kind of job doesn't really suit her anyways. Interesting, because I feel like he said the exact opposite last episode. I think he was really thinking that it did suit her well. But she's kind of gone back to the person she was before, so now it doesn't. Loki quickly shook her head. Don't push yourself. Your family's huge, after all, between cooking, bathing, and playing. I'm also surprised you've even been able to manage school up till now. Really? Regardless, you should put your family first. She put it so simply. I distinctly felt my breath stop cold. てつだわせて。私、浅井君のことをもっと知りたいの。こんなこと言ったら怒るかもしれないけれど。浅井君ってとっても I feel like the direction this is heading is that Sabaki's going to try to fix us. Why would I mind you saying that? It's the truth. Still, I don't feel like I was particularly lonely. Yeah, I feel like people get into bad situations and they get so used to it that they don't see any other way to live life. And that's kind of sad. Spocky. Sabaki seemed a little agitated. Alright, go hop in the shower. Huh? Wait, no, I'm kidding. It was a bad joke. Sabaki's face was boiling red. Hey, hey, calm down. I told you. It was just one of my usual crappy jokes. Seriously. Damn, I thought she'd find that funny. Anyways, I wanted to talk to you about something. Sabaki nodded obediently. I just be flattering myself here, but you like me, right? Spucky suddenly stiffened up. She lowered her head and trembled uncontrollably. Then, with a red face, she nodded slightly. 
ずっと前からえっと声かけたくて一緒に学園終わって一緒に CD 変えて嬉しい嬉しくて Was that really just the other day? That felt like that was weeks ago, maybe even months ago. It was like we just had so much time with her. I, I, I was looking back. I realized it's only been like, I don't know what, like five episodes or something? Like since we kind of like started steering onto her route and making choices to kind of spend more time with her. I realized it hasn't been that long, but I don't know, it, it's felt like a while. I know like physically the amount of time that it's taken me to get through this much. Uh, has been extensive, but like even just playing through with her hasn't felt like <laughs> hasn't felt like just the other day. You know, it feels like it's been a really long time, and it's really interesting uh, that, that she's apparently liked us for a long time. I'm assuming that's before we even started. You know, really getting to know her. It seemed like she just kind of appeared and was writing in her her diary and. Randomly wanted to know us, right? She seemed kind of like a fed. <laughs> uh, how how wrong I was. She definitely seemed like she was working with the, the government or something. Uh, that didn't seem to be true. But that's interesting. She's, she's liked us for a while. And then now she feels really, really happy to spend time with us. Tsubaki glanced up at me adorably. Momentary silence befell us once again. I should be saying something right now. Let's go to school together tomorrow morning. That was kind of my way of saying stay the night with me, Tsubaki. I embraced her tightly. Wow, okay. Whoa. Okay, I was like, are they gonna show something? Is there like an adult version of this at all? Because I... I'm playing the Steam version, so I understand I might have a censored version. Is, is there supposed to be anything there? Am I missing anything? I, I've never been told there's an adult version of this. I've never been told to install any patches or anything. You guys are usually pretty good about that. So I'm gonna assume there wasn't. Saki's smile was the first thing my hazy eyes saw today. Oops, I guess we'll have to skip school. Yeah. Wow, she came over, spent the night with us, made us breakfast, and then is now going to go get her school uniform. Wow. Really? Actually, something smells pretty good. I guess it's wafting in from the kitchen. Sorry, I'll pay you for it. <laughs> Not some lit looking for my wallet. Well, I can't just eat for free. Wait, why can't I? After all, this girl's not just a classmate anymore. Yeah, you're my girlfriend. She's more like family. A refreshing new day began. Oh, freaking Aichi. What the hell, kid? I skip all the time. You never get on my ass like that. Huh, that's crazy. さすがのおれちゃんもよ。あの椿がばっくれかますとさすがに心配ぶっこいちゃうわけだよ。というわけで、お前なんか知らね。あ、more Hey, face, too close. I can hear you from over there. I can see why he'd feel that way. I don't feel bad for him, but I, I can see why he feels that way. So Spocky still isn't here. Why? He started cursing with a terrifyingly hilarious expression. This Joker, he may be a dumbass, but his instincts are strangely accurate. 
I don't even want to think about what he's going to do after he finds out my relationship with Tsubaki. Ah, sure, why not? Answer without thinking. Tsubaki danced in the classroom full of energy. And thus, Eiichi began his flattery. I hate H. He's always got to make it about him. Sucky's single phrase had enough destructive power to knock Eiichi back into his true self for an instant. <laughs> Bucky spoke without a shred of worry. Eichi must have found it a little overboard that she would out of her way to do that, and I agree with him. I don't know. I really hope something happens uh, with the the bad ending. I really hope that they they go further with that, because I I was playing through it right, and I was getting a little uncomfortable. It, it's really uncomfortable to watch somebody who is such a good person like do bad things, because you know like they got tempted by the devil, which I think is a great. <sighs> A, a great way of putting it for how Mao is kind of the devil. <laughs> and and she got pushed to do things that she normally wouldn't do. I think it was great. Uh, did it make me uncomfortable? Yes. I It always makes me uncomfortable to see stuff like that. But th there's a side of me that like kind of enjoys watching and seeing what happens. Like seeing what kind of chaos results from it. Uh, I think it, it makes for an interesting story. I, I don't like to see that in reality, because that's bad, right? <laughs> there, there's definite consequences for people doing that in reality. Um, but I like in a story, like, kind of seeing where they go with that. And I felt like it, it was going in an interesting direction. Like I said, er, this whole experience reminds me a lot of Death Note. I love seeing how Light kind of started off trying to have morals and values and how that kind of degrades over time like it's impossible to do what what he was doing without losing some of your humanity so i hope the bad ending goes a little bit further with that at least i don't know how extensively it will it will uh, but i also like that we're kind of getting a good ending where they maybe are getting together i don't understand how that's gonna work because he kind of did all this shit to her on purpose kind of the reason why she suffered but we'll, we'll see how they, they work it out. <laughs> what the hell does that even mean? Aren't you into older girls? That's good stuff, man. Hmm. Couldn't help but stay quiet. Uh, nothing. Damn it, kid. Will you get your face out of mine? Gotta do the stupid club after school, don't we? Before long, we were eating lunch at the usual place. After arriving early at the rooftop, Usami called to me. And this is the other thing. I want to see how they kind of resolve the whole thing with Usami. I think it'll be cool if in the bad ending, like, Usami is kind of working against both of us. That would be interesting. What do you mean, thanks? If you were grateful, you wouldn't have accused me of being a criminal. You're stubborn, you know that. Do you have any proof at all? Usami is playing for bangs, as always. What do you think? If you're not confident about it, then don't start spouting it. I, I'm interested to see where Usami heads in her investigations and the other routes. So I feel like 
this is definitely one where we've kind of like faced her head on, right? Uh, and we got to see her pretty much accuse us of being Mao. I mean, that that's a good observation, right? Like, there was a lot of signs that maybe we were. It, it makes sense in her mind. She doesn't have quite enough evidence to prove it. Uh, and that's just in this route. I wonder what's going to happen in some of the other stories. I think one that might be kind of interesting is Cannon's. So we already know that Gonzo wants us to get together with Cannon and kind of make something happen. So I wonder where exactly that's going to go. Uh, Cannon's been kind of absent, I feel like, ever since the whole uh, scene with Usami chasing us, right? Like, that was the the last time we really saw a, something happen with Cannon. I, th I think we might have seen her maybe once after that. She was talking about how someone uh, tried to commit a robbery, you know? But otherwise, we haven't seen much of Cannon. And then there's obviously Shiratori. Uh, you guys were telling me that Shiratori's company is connected to the Snow Corporation? So... Uh, we'll definitely see something more with that. I think that'll be fun. Hmm. Just uh, a lot of, a lot of more scenarios in which Usami can kind of try to piece things together. Look, I don't care. Just don't suspect me again, okay? Usami's hair lowered and began to swing like willow branches. What, Usami? Tsubaki jogged over to Usami. Tsubaki suddenly bowed a bit. きつく当たってたでしょ。はるちゃんは精一杯やってくれたんだよね。廃墟の探索とかしたんでしょ。お父さんから聞いたんだけど、女の子が一人で行っていいようなもんじゃないって。うさみが I alone tilted my head quizzically. Uzomi will pursue rationality wherever it may lead her. She probably realizes that even if they became involved, the police wouldn't say, uh, say it's much too late now uh, that things have progressed this far. It's been a decent amount of time since the incident. As the victim, Tsubaki and her family probably don't remember it vividly enough for testimonies, and Mao might have destroyed all evidence already. It'd probably be for the best for me to leave. There was nothing for me to do in the classroom either, so I thought of sending a text message to Sabaki. No, knowing her, there's no chance she actually brought her phone to school. I'll just call Miki-chan. Huh? What? Uh, uh, you finished talking to Usami already. That's great. Usami was being pretty annoying, but you were acting a bit strange yourself. Her voice just got quieter and quieter. I even invited Usami to my room once. Thought you might have been worried about that. I think there's some irony in her being jealous of Usami when Usami was suspecting us of being the person that killed her mother and the person that she hates the most in the world. Yeah, we were totally gonna get together with Usami. Totally. Oh, well, it was a good experience at least, right? I really do hope that they don't get together in her route. So I know Usami does have a route. I hope that's more like a true end type thing, like where one of them wins. Maybe, uh, 
I don't know. I, I I hope they do a little bit more than just like, oh, Mal gets caught and, and goes to jail kind of thing, or or he just dies tragically. I, I hope they, they have a really good build up to, to something going on. I, I don't know if I could see them getting together. Like, would Usami be able to put aside everything? The only way I could see that happening is if if they really differentiate Kyosuke and Mao. I, I have this suspicion that they're going to come kind of come together at some point, kind of be the same person a little bit, or they're going to be able to kind of communicate, because right now it doesn't seem like they can. It, it, Mao is aware of Kyosuke, but Kyosuke doesn't know about Mao. So, I'm curious to see how that ends up. Cheerfully stuck out her tongue. <laughs> Uh, yeah, sure. Hesitate, but there's no reason to refuse. Oh, but I won't be available until late tonight. There's some things I need to take care of. Some insignificant things, like club activities. Sounds exhausting. She flipped it open and perused it for a moment. Yeah. Okay, he asked my permission, embarrassed. Unless you're afraid that someone in the class would hear. I don't usually like attention. So in the face of that fawning voice, I couldn't help but nod. No, it's a yes. That'd be great. I answer currently. Wow, okay. Just dropping the, the love bomb there. My knees almost buckled. I was planning to remind her not to expose her relationship, but thanks to her declaration, I forgot. I didn't feel quite right for the rest of the day. Yeah, I still ended up going to the club. Wait, when the hell did <laughs> when the hell did Usami join the club? Hey everyone, the role of God this week will again be played by me as I Kyosuke. Uh, oh. Hey, what the hell is Usami doing here? Hey Ichi, I thought this lab equipment storage room was our Jerusalem. What the hell? What's with you two? Are you in this together? There are factions now, whatever, uh, do what you want today, human scum. Uh, how disgusting. Stop beating around the bush and repent. Wait, you intend to rebel against God? What? Yo, what? Why did she join him? Wait, 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 wait. What are you talking about? I said, wait. Material. I know that asshole. What kind of material is it? Talk. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are so dumb. Oh my. Who are you? Who are you to present your opinions to Holmes? Tsubaki just... Yeah. Why? Why? Why in front of everyone? Spocky, damn it. It's all over now. I should have told her. <laughs> Frieza from Dragon Ball? First you talk down to Holmes, now you command Frieza. He leaves me with a glare as if looking at something dirty. Hey, wait. What? Hey, at least getting a Tsubaki is more socially acceptable than you going after Miss Noriko. This eye full of deep contempt, age she fled the storage room. What do you want, you bitch? Have you not done enough damage already? You got a problem with that? 
自分の数少ない友人の一人ですしぜひぜひ幸せにしてください This whole thing is becoming quite a nightmare. Ma, Ato no kotoa, watashi ni makase te kudasai. Okay. What are you talking about? The rest of what? Tatoeba, Mao to ka des. I thought you were convinced I was Mao. So means I was so aloof, I had no idea what she's talking about. Tatoeba, ano minoshiro kin dashu. Ugoite masu ne. Watashi wa mama to kara no case wa hakonde shimae mashita ga. Ato de yoku yoku kangae tara, sore nari ni mieta mono ga arun desu. I'm now and I copied the coin locker key beforehand, right? So you can also say more. Can't then you stick it in a mono de one night not to can't deal with this chick anymore. I'm going off Sabaki. This shouldn't have anything to do with you. After pausing for a few seconds, Usami finally softly nodded. The atmosphere wouldn't permit a refusal. What is it with her? The girl before me said this with a slightly lonely expression. Usami turned around and left. She never turned back. The only feeling welled up within me, but it was only temporary. I'm very forgetful, after all. The feeling of nostalgia experienced from Usami calling out my name would surely soon disappear into the farthest reaches of my memory. I left school and headed for Tsubaki's house. I feel like there was, there was something buried in here that was kind of important. <laughs> I mean, are they gonna are they gonna do something crazy like she's actually our sister? Because I know Cannon's supposed to be our sister, but uh, she lost her mom, and our mom was was kind of a bitch. I don't know. I'm just wondering. There, there's some kind of deeper meaning in what she just said. Like, I feel like that conversation right right here at the end was really important. And I just, I'm lacking critical information. I just, my, my brain is too feeble to understand. Either that or maybe she knows about our past. The moment I arrived, I was mobbed by her family. Wait a second, get off me. Pardon? Please, God. Hey, Sabaki, please don't tell me that even your dad. I asked her in almost a whisper. Yeah, exactly. It would be weird to hide that. She has a smile. Bye, but why did you tell Eiji and Usami? I guess there's no reason you shouldn't. Oh, well, it would have gotten out someday anyways. Yeah, I don't know why he's trying to hide it. I guess maybe he wanted to relish in it privately for a little bit, you know? Sometimes it's fun when you just got a relationship and nobody else knows, and it's just you and the person you love. Might as well give up. Thanks for inviting me. Sounds really is a lively atmosphere. The kids chimed in under the father's leadership. Hi, Kyosuke. A mountain of rice sat on the table. Wow, y'all are planning ahead. Hey, without a sound. Look, he just kept looking at me. Then it was beef and potato stew. Sounds pretty good. The atmosphere is rapidly becoming awkward. Can't help feeling out of place here. <laughs> She's not blocking you. <laughs> I'll try to respond to that one. In any case, eating with her parents the first day as a couple is kind of. So random thoughts filled my head. So Maki just kept on looking at me uh, with a smile. I mean, you've eaten with her before. This shouldn't be that awkward. I guess maybe because things have changed. <laughs> It's not like I'm doing things the hard way or anything. Yeah, 
Hey, yo, in front of her parents. Smokey's father, along with Subaki herself, burst out laughing. Don't write about this in, in your diary, you hear? Ah. Well, this is Tsubaki's chapter. I guess there's a Kyosuke's chapter. Pretty scary. It's Kawaii. Damn, something must be wrong with me. Cannot function well in a warm environment like this one. I think it's just so foreign to what he's used to. He's used to just family being uh, a nuisance. <laughs> kind of using him in a way. So are you still using this voice sauce? Oh, oh, oh. Ah. Uh, oh, pardon. Classic, Oh, あ、いや、カバーでしてる。北島三郎とかだろ。ハブラーフマイスポスタンスフェッ。あ、いや、あ、マスオドコンピューターズンサッチ。ハキスファーザーヒットスパームオフフェッス。あれだ。ミキシー
Right. It's cute watching like how uh, infatuated with us Subaki is right now. He's just been like staring at us, smiling the entire time. Guys, you need to get you a woman who does that, okay? Aspire to have a girl that has fun with you no matter what you're doing. If she's just smiling at you, kind of a little bit stupidly almost, it's just like so happy to be around you, and then uh, she makes you happy in return. I mean, like, what else can you ask for, right? But she said these words, she brought rice laden chopsticks to my mouth. Hi. So sweet, she'd give me a toothache. But everything, even if they don't have a scent to their name, the family shines. <laughs> Sorry, I'm completely stuffed. Spooky busily changed her brother and sister's clothes, washed them, and coaxed them to sleep. Only her father and I were left in the living room. Two of us uh, going out has already become a pretense of our marriage. How was everything? Have your preparations for the big move been going smoothly? You left the living room for last. Okay, I think I see where this is going. Kyosuke has $500,000, and that's how much short they are. I think he's going to pay off the, the loan and... Uh, make sure that they can stay in this house because he knows how much they they care about this house i think he's going to do something like that he's going to defy his father and i don't know how that's going to go this is supposed to be a good ending i just wanted to run the room full of emotion my gaze followed his there are tear marks all over the tatami and walls have holes yeah. i'm guessing it was tear marks sorry look his dad poured himself another drink yeah, you mean the one that's a little darker than the rest. He suddenly started laughing. Even Tsubaki can be careless. You think... After that, Spocky's father went silent. Maybe he's normally a person who doesn't talk much. Yes? So you met my gaze. Uh, we were already talking, but sure. Got a bad feeling about this. What if he plans to say he doesn't want to give up this house? Will he try to use me, his daughter's boyfriend, to get the house back? Spocky say that. So he shook his head.君は僕が箸に手をつけるまでは決して食べ始めようとしなかった。醤油を使う時も必ず僕が使った後だった。だいどだ。マスベナーオブハビット。Perhaps。そういうのはうちでは必要ないよ。Oh, this is so sweet. It just feels so bad that he's like done so much to their family and then they like still care about him. Like they don't realize that he was kind of deceiving them. What's different about me? Who knows? Hearing my mother answer Spocky's father unexpectedly sighed. Face anything. Oh. Read in his line. Complicated feelings flood my heart. What benefit can I receive from a penniless bunch like you? Yet why would such an ordinary, happy family reach out to someone like me? I don't understand. I don't have to understand to realize how comfortable this feeling is. Yes, finally subject to my element. How's it going? I imagine it must be difficult. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to 
I understand. To tell you the truth, I'm much better at handling subjects like this. <laughs> Maybe it is. Couldn't help but smile wryly. Only I met people like the me was when my mother and I were wandering. Only there had been just one single warm, passionate person like this. Wipe away the pointless delusion and chatted with Subaki's father for a while. I don't know, I definitely had times growing up too. Where I'm like, if I had just met the right person when I was, you know... In a moment where I was feeling a little bit lost or a little bit lonely, you know, a little bit unsure where I was going, maybe uh, things would have turned out differently. I would have been able to solve uh, the problems I had a lot sooner. When I announced my departure, Sabaki walked me to the door. Yeah. Again, I looked down and scratched my head. Does it feel like? Does it always feel like this? I mean, the kidnapping just happened, so it must have disturbed the rhythm of the house. Is it normally like this? No. What am I trying to say? See you tomorrow, then. I thought that was an invitation. Saki puffed out her cheeks. There's no school tomorrow, so make it happen somehow during a break from work. I'll be fine. Anyways, don't you have things to do here? Great, then. I appreciate it. I started considering which tasks to give her. And come by tomorrow afternoon, you can do the same things as before. I can't believe she actually spouts lines that belong in a TV drama without even batting an eyelash. Bucky suddenly waved me back. What? Huh? He showed me how to get in by putting specific pressure on the rickety back door. Wait a minute, Bucky, you shouldn't be telling outsiders about this. Damn, last episode there was some like bad shit going on. This episode has just been straight wholesome. It's early to talk about that. Aren't you about to move anyways? Alright, thanks. How about I sneak in during the night and scare you? She's <laughs> just like, sure, you know, it could be fun. Jesus, there should be a limit to her defenselessness. See you tomorrow. It's really that rare. Couldn't think of it. When was the last time I laughed from my heart? See ya. She's really not eager to see me go. Hesitating for just a moment, Suwaki pressed her body against mine. She grabbed the sleeve of my coat. What is it? Yeah, they're gonna do the thing? So I can close her eyes waiting for something. My lips fell a moistness upon this. There's something had melted from within my heart. Uh, what the frick? You didn't give me a CG. I didn't even get to see it happen. J wow. Disappointing. They better give me something before this ends. I'm, I'm assuming this isn't going to be super long. But I don't know. You know what does? She all but jumped back in the house. I don't quite know what to do with the warmth these people bring to my heart. Even though the night was freezing and didn't snow on my way home. I'll leave it to you then. It's like the last time I asked her to organize some documents. After we're done here, let's go out to eat. Okay, obediently nodded. Since Subaki seemed so eager to come today, I think I'll ask her to help more often. Again, I think she'd probably disagree to anything if I asked of her. Yeah, that'd be great. She's quite clever and never complains. Pretty much the perfect assistant. No, not really. I don't know what on earth was making her so happy, but Swaki's face was filled with a smile the whole time. After around two hours, the job was pretty much finished. Well then, why don't we head out?
Gohan, now I need to pick up some things uh, while we're out, anyways. What are you planning to have you come with me? Clean up a bit without the apartment. I'm just concerned that, like, since we're kind of just doing whatever, our dad's not gonna like that. I mean, he did kind of say we should get with Subaki. Maybe he'll just kind of let us go because of that. What are you feeling as uh, like as far as food goes? What about that restaurant we went to last time? Their lunch menu isn't half bad. They even have salmon, I think. I know, I hate fancy restaurants. Like, I can't do it. I mean, I I don't mind... I don't mind some place that's nice. I just don't want it to be fancy. Like, I like... I just like to eat good food. Uh, and if I, like, I'm on vacation or something, I'd like maybe, like, a good view while I'm eating. Uh, you know, that's that's always preferable. But I, I don't like expensive. I'm like, I, I can't... I can't justify spending a lot on food. Unless I'm going to eat it for multiple meals. Then sure. Let's at a low-key chain restaurant or something. Ah, she wants to be a, a family. Some of noisy kids, you mean. Indeed, despite the noise, we make for a peaceful, restful experience. You know, I think that what we're doing is normally called a date. After our late lunch, something was bugging me. Okay, I've been looking delightedly at a baby in the seat behind me the whole time. Oh no, she's got baby fever. I think that's bothering me as a change in my frame of mind. Huh? Oh yeah, I saw they took her money. It's on me, it was on uh, the tip of my tongue, but I swallowed it again. An entirely different situation if she just expected me to pay as the man relationship, but she's more than happy to go with Dutch. Kinda makes me wonder what would happen if I decided to pick up her check. Then I'd be out 600 yen, big whoop. I'm surprised with myself for thinking along those lines. Go to the department store, look at some shoes. Phone rang right after I took her hand. Why now, of all times? With hesitation, I press the talk button. Hello? Yeah. I nearly covered my mouth with my hand and mouth with my conversation. The talk to use my gaze and my hand to direct Sabaki. To stop her from hearing the call, I intentionally pulled her away from her. Saki must have understood my intention as she didn't attempt to close the distance as we walked. I'm guessing it was his dad. That's the only person I could think of that wouldn't want to maybe have her hearing. But I don't know. It could be somebody else. Try to take care of it. Call continued. Saki <laughs> followed me silently, her face not seeming the slightest bit dissatisfied. Yes, yes, I apologize. Looks like this is going to drag on for a long time. Hold up my hand like a repentant Buddhist telling Spocky I was sorry. <laughs> Spoke softly with that radiant smile still on her face. Her considered a well met blessing, I kept on talking. Call was finally over. Yeah, it was pretty serious actually. I'm sorry, I don't think calls that long will come around too often though. After I pulled myself together, we walked over to the apartment store. Found most of what we were after. I learned this from an incredible person. It's for the best that one buys his own, uh, his daily necessities in a single trip. This way, one won't waste extra time. I used to be like that. I, I was very much a person that kind of waited till I needed things, right? Uh, mostly, or mostly because I would wait for sales or I would wait, uh, just to make sure things don't go bad, because I feel like if you just kind of buy things and hold on to them for a while, you're like introducing the, maybe that you won't get to them in time and they'll go bad. Uh, but definitely like after all the, the stuff that's happened in the past few years, I mean, you guys probably know what I'm talking about. Uh, like shortages and things like that, it's, it's kind of changed how I buy things. I've definitely started buying 
if I need one right now, I buy two to make sure I always have a spare. So I'm like, I'm always kind of rotating through things instead of waiting until I'm almost out. Just because it's like everything has had shortages. I mean, it was just uh, ridiculous. When uh, around the time I was having my daughter, there was a little bit of like the. Well, no, I think it happened like just barely after uh, there was a baby food shortage. There was like uh, the formula. Uh, so that was really important that I had enough on hand. Uh, and then there was a sriracha shortage. And I'm like, I really like sriracha. I, I don't use it all the time, but I like to have sriracha and I couldn't get it. I ran out and then it was gone. I mean, it just kind of taught me to make sure I have a little bit extra for when stuff like that happens. Are you going to be able to carry all that? You're just one girl, you know? Mm. Then let me help you. Well, do I ask, but... I don't think a guy wants to hear that the shoes he bought are, are pretty. I'm saying this because you want to know how much they cost. See, and I'm just like... I, I literally wore my, uh, my tennis shoes. <laughs> I just wore my sneakers to my mom's wedding recently. She got like remarried. <laughs> I just really wore wore my uh, Under Armour shoes that I've had for a while. And I may not say things like fashion starts at the feet, but I tend to spend a lot of money on shoes. I get scuffed easily. Are you writing that in your diary? Right by my side. She responds with a smile to every last word that comes out of my mouth. When is your birthday? Huh? Uh, never mind. I wanted to give her a present on her birthday at least, but I was too embarrassed to bring it up. Going home now, there's still some work left. Uh, I plan to. I'll walk you to the, uh, to the train station. After hearing that, Spocky revealed an innocent childlike smile and took my hand. Went home, responded to some email, and called back some people, left messages on my answering machine. My mind wasn't on it, though. I had too much fun today. I'm even going to Sabaki's house soon. Is it okay to spend time on things like this? I might be going out with her now, but what can I stand to gain from such a relationship? From an economic perspective, spending money on having fun is a cost with no benefit. You can still I'll be joining the family for dinner again tonight. I'm in a great mood. I guess I could just think of it as a way to dispel stress. Thank you for having me over again. What I feared I was given a grand welcome. Seems to really believe that. Where's your dad? Papa, Osaka. Osaka. Huh? Ah, looking to raise funds, probably. Children sprang up from the other rooms, surrounding a boisterous table talking about matters of no importance. They managed to provide the atmosphere with an air of passion. Why me? Kid doesn't even know the meaning of the word stranger. That's a girl carrying a load of laundry. No, it's alright. Should be fine. Hiroki dragged me into a changing room in a sprint. It's really interesting. I don't think we've had any uh, headaches recently either. I wonder if that means Mal's kind of subsided for now, or I wonder what's going on with that. I didn't even think about Mal, honestly. Maybe we're healing our inner child right now. <laughs> the narrow, dirty room. The number of the tiles on the floor is starting to peel off. The gas heater clearly had trouble keeping the water hot. Hey, yo. I'm smaller than you, I'll kill myself. <laughs> His big and dirty eyes warm my heart. Exactly like Sabaki's. Oh, sure. The soapy sponge I helped him wash his entire body. Look at my stomach, Hiroki tilted his head. Have you noticed? I was taken aback to something that happened a long time ago, back in the days where I wandered with my mom. A scar from uh, a box cutter after a bunch of heartless demons cornered me on the streets. Can you keep this a secret from your sister? Just do it, promise me. 
It was natural for an underprivileged kid like me to be bullied at this at the time. I didn't feel any anger or sadness. It's not even a big scar. If Saki found out about it, she'd start worrying over nothing. I think something tickled my back. Hey! <laughs> Thanks. Alright, Hiroki, let's count to ten and then get dry and dressed. So called change of clothes happened to be underwear and pajamas that belonged to Swaki's father. Uh, we'll see, kid. It's been a long time since I've taken a bath with someone. Hey, was this the first time I've had one with someone other than my parents? I feel like something to drink. Sure. Maki always seems to be thinking of me. After my quiet answer, she scurried off to the kitchen, leaving only her footsteps to break the tranquility of the evening. I've been taking things really leisurely recently. And I don't know why, but my head hasn't hurt at all in the past two days. Okay, so we're talking about that. Perfect. Stretched down the floor. Even though this isn't my home, I have a peace of mind here that allows me to forget all my worries. Oh, I must have dozed, dozed off for a moment. Did I fall asleep? Uh, tomorrow's a day off, after all. So I left my side of my groggy reply. Oh, oh, thanks. Horribly tired. When I close my eyes, it feels like my entire body is floating in the air. Bucky's face was before mine. I... Oh! Damn! Calling us a pet name! This, this home. Meaningless nonsensical sleep talk. Like the demolition's already been scheduled. Mm. I hear they're putting up a hotel. Wasn't able to answer Smoky's question. You don't really want to move, do you? Of course you wouldn't. Yeah, but he was bullshitting, okay? I, I'm sorry. Nothing. Never mind. It's this environment intoxicating me. I'm gonna steal that diary of yours. Let me see it. Yeah. Look at that a tiny panic noise like that of a mosquito. Alright, let's see it then. Then when? What the Don't say that! Come on, don't talk to me. That sounds like a last one. Testament. No, I don't want her to say shit like that because that makes it seem like she's going to get killed off. Like Gonzo's going to kill her off and then he's going to go read the diary and that's how they're going to end it. It's going to be like, oh, I loved Kyosuke Kun and... And I'm so grateful for him. And then he's going to sit there crying because he caused her so much pain. If they end it like that, I'm going to be mad. I'm going to be mad. Because that's sad. I don't want it. It's a meaningless conversation, but it brought a shred of warmth to my heart. My let's grab you. Not even sure if I responded to her or not. In a home where the residents were about to be chased out, I quickly fell asleep. Just, I, now I feel like there's a sense of dread. Like something bad's gonna happen. They said that shit. It's been a week since I started going off with Sabaki. During that time, I visited her home numerous times to eat dinner with her family. Lucky siblings all call me Onichan. True to their word, they've already treated me like an honest to God member of the family. It was the night before their big move that Sabaki's father called me over. What'd you say? Yeah. They're hearing the good news, the entire family is exuberant. Managed yeah, to borrow 50 million yen. Yeah, that's what we thought. Must be a profoundly generous man. This is utterly unthinkable. Was it a mistake to forgo investigating the economic status of their relatives? 
How can something so stupid happen? I mustered all my strength to swallow this sentence before it burst out. You know, amongst family to think that there would be a person who had lent an astronomical sum such as 50 million yen to people who clearly won't be able to pay it back. It's like throwing all that money in the gutter. Then again, if you consider Spocky's father's character, it's not impossible. Well, now, to think your loan is actually repaid. Spocky's father borrowed 50 million yen from a company I introduced to him. Clearly, clearing the debt means he gets his collateral back. In other words, he gets to keep his land. Alternatively, one could describe the situation thusly. My entire plan has been ruined. Yeah, Kyosuke-kun. Family overflowed with joy, yet there I was swamped with regret. Don't run into any issues with interest. I'm willing to resign and ask a question. もちろんだよ。やっぱり町金は高いね。持つべきものは親戚を含めた家族だよ。seems like he's still kind of mad about it. I was hoping his heart's kind of changed it a little bit, but I guess not. Well, I answered this to now. His eye corporation's reputation will suffer a monstrous blow from this. No company be damned. The most terrifying thing of all is Gonzo. I have to go report this to him. ここが一番落ち着くよね。Sure. Baki couldn't possibly understand my feelings at the moment. Was laughing and talking of energy. Her whole family was laughing so innocently. The smile, those smiles, is what draws angels to their aid. Amongst the crowd of happy faces, mine alone bore a false smile. Oh, this trebles, I reported the information to Gonzo. He had listened silently to my report, but at long last he slowly opened his mouth. I apologize, it's all because of my negligence. Won't be clear until I perform a thorough damage analysis. The worst case scenario involves the cancel of our contract with Snow Corporation. It implies we'd be doing business as if peddling barefooted from now on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Immediately fell speechless. Ah, oh, fuck, he's headed dead on. Hmm. Just kidding, I thought Nothing can be hidden from Gonzo. Lord, my head like a prisoner awaiting his execution. The beast grunts softly. Huh? My worst fears began to tear at my innards. Those fears manifested in the form of my quivering fingertips. Soon after, I was riding downtown in Gonzo's car. The man himself didn't say anything as we drove along. He only stared up by the hungry, lustful neon signs. The driver's eyes were wide open, silently screaming to me in fear through the <laughs> view mirror. His fingers on the wheel, his wide shoulders covered by a suit jacket, his entire body seemed so rigid. He was deeply afraid of Gonzo tonight. There in the high end club uh, we went to downtown, saturated with heat, cigarette smoke, and an insane lust for money. The moment Gonzo and his entourage uh, showed their faces, the normal customers all fled like scared rabbits towards the exit. There are around 10 people here, each with an atrocious, horrific face, all of them surrounding Gonzo. Looking around, there are only tight perms, slicked back, crew cuts, and baldies. And as if there was a, some social norm or law about it, everyone was wearing vulgar decorations. Gonzo looked around the floor with sharp eyes. Gonzo laughed, and in contrast, shivers ran across the angry faces of those around him. Serpentine glares uh, from all ten people concentrated on me. I'm trying to figure out if this is going to end poorly. <laughs> they, they, they're they very much implying that it is. I'm calling me son is under boss of the organization, Horabe. 
He stands as number two within the group. There's an immense difference in power between him and Gonzo, the man at the top. This huge bald man happens to be the former professional wrestler, Grizzly Iajima. He was chased out of the sport after half killing his production owner in a crime of passion. It's said to have been wandering the street when he was picked up by Gonzo. Ever since then, he's been Gonzo's bodyguard. Gonzo almost always keeps him by his side when he goes out. Orbe's inquiries and shouts serve to synchronize everyone's opinions. Having the topic suddenly turned to me made me want to instinctively curl up. Very glad that everyone could be here today to celebrate with me. The only thing I can say. Everyone held up their cups and cheered. High grade alcohol, stuff going for 200,000 yen per bottle. There's brought to the table. Everyone in the family down their drinks in the order of power. Here and there, the in sound of insults mixed with cheers as they click their glasses. I was seated at the seat of honor, forced to call me deal with each and every wicked face in the crowd. The amount of cigarette smoke in there was like murder on my hey, lungs. For a while, Gonzo asked a question to a man in charge of pouring the drinks. Oh, and Gonzo opened his mouth to cry, which had been so loud only a moment ago ceased all sound. No matter how insignificant his sentence was, it was enough to turn the savage lions into cowardly kittens. Oh, well. I was terrified as if he committed a blunder. Let's repeat the same question to everyone in the room. Every last one of them had some family problem. One's father disappeared, another's mother became a prostitute. One man uh, went to juvie after stabbing someone. A few were forced to pay back someone else's debt. Several used drugs to escape reality, and practically all of them had their lives destroyed by some drinking or gambling habit. Oi, oi. Uh, no, because they wouldn't be here if they were. Vulgar laughter permeated the room. It was a dark laugh of self-abandonment, telling me they accepted the fact that the life had given up on them. Yes, everyone here already knows this place. No one thinks his, uh, his life has been unfortunate. They can no longer accept pity from anyone. No one here has hope that this world become fair. And only this, the primary rule of survival. Corner of the weak and obey those who might. Word family probably doesn't mean much to anyone following such a law. Nevertheless, Gonzo brought uh, together the deep creases on the brow of the open-hearted faces, he said. That everyone's face tightened. I finally realized Gonzo's true intentions. Gonzo slowly surveyed everyone in the group, choosing finally to settle those eyes and unending darkness they bear on me. His eyes threatened me, preventing me from saying yes or no. The next line sounded like it had been taken straight from a family drama, yet it felt more akin to a scene of a dark novel when passing through Gonzo's mouth. Yes, someone answered my voice so loud as if they were trying to fill the club. Gonzo smiled with satisfaction. Trained dog won't howl at the wrong time. Very much threatening us. I feel like we need to... To listen to him, or bad things will happen. The sensation of falling into a bottomless swamp rushed through my mind. Gonzo had just proclaimed before all these people that he wouldn't let me escape. Betrayal means death. This is the law of blood that Gonzo and I share. The swamp has no bottom, and the fathoms await me. Gonzo has me with that cruel mind Oi. of his. One of the people around him moved. After a few minutes, a black briefcase was presented to me. Everyone present was staring at its contents with greed. 10,000 yen bills were all needed like that. Fear burned the bottom of my heart. In the eyes of an outsider, this looks just like a father celebrating with his son, but since it's I Gonzo, the textbook case uh, miser, there's no chance of doing that. That pleasant sweat coated my skin and my stomach ate. Everyone threw their odd gazes at Gonzo. Father never given an allowance before, now picked an occasion where celebrating to give an astronomical sum to his son. It's enough of a performance. As long as we follow this great man, there's no need to worry about money. Thus, their loyalty is renewed. Yeah. 
How can I be happy if I accept this 50 million that I received Gonzo's favor? How many fortunes will I have to earn before I can repay this? Gonzo's cruelty and cunning made me an offer I can't refuse. Everyone here is holding his breath, waiting for that moment, the climax of his celebration. If Uzo would disgrace the boss, everyone would turn their thanks towards me. Once again, I felt a mix of respect and fear for being known as a Zai Gonzo. Thank you very much, Father. Gonzo is still staring at me, as if probing, waiting for my next sentence. I'll spend my life repaying this kindness. Gonzo brought the corner of his mouth near the goes uh, I'm guessing in Haru's route, we're gonna maybe stand up to him, because I'm like, there's just no way we're gonna do it otherwise. The 50 million yen he gave me is heavy in my arms. Money I just received so easily was enough to save Spocky's family, but to me right here in this club, it's certainly not worth the same amount. Can't possibly see this as worth the same amount. The dark feast continued until dawn. Spocky and her ilk can do nothing but bemoan their fate now. I seal my heart for the good this uh, time, once again submitting to the role of Azai Gonzo's prized livestock. I need to rethink my strategy. No matter what I have to do, I absolutely must force Spocky's family to move out. This is Kiyosuke. Hello, I apologize for calling you this time, actually. I'm in direct contact with Snow Corporation's Mr. Somea. I don't know why, but the Director of Senior Management has been personally entrusted to look over this matter. It's like receiving an Imperial degree, no matter what, the Azai Corporation must fulfill this request. That's the whole story. I was hoping we could discuss this and possibly extend the deadline in a few more days. Yes, it's done. His reaction was surprisingly cold. Someone else, you say? No problem. No problem. Jene is a powerful organization with the Soul Alliance. Its influence takes a close second behind Gonzo so Sonoyama. Gonzo Sonoyama group. Right now, it's still a group consisting of stubborn militarists. They're always at odds with Gonzo's economic focus. Even in my worst nightmare, I wouldn't have thought that our business would have been stolen by them. Two weeks. No, can you give me ten days? I swear to you, I will meet and exceed your expectations. <laughs> I thought we were going to have some uh, happy times here at the end of the route, and now it's just getting darker. Your quest the next time is Asshole. We won't hesitate to use more extreme methods. Asshole is one hell of a veteran when it comes to these things. For all I know, he never even talked to a Shin -Yay. Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity to continue working with you. Damn it. Even though I said that to Mr. Somea, I'm still at square one. Today I almost spend it, send a few threatening phone calls and disturbing visits their way. Still in this modern age, it's too dangerous to force them to move. If things go wrong, they'll end up in the slammer. No, wait. Perhaps I could lay a little groundwork with the police's jurisdiction beforehand. That way, no matter how much fuss Sabaki's family makes, the police won't act. Of course, this is different from avoiding a speeding ticket. It would require substantial cash. Oh, then perhaps I could get a hold of a weakness of theirs. Worked along into the night analyzing illegal, contemptible tactics. During that time, Spocky's family's face surfaced in my mind again and again. Again and again, I'd feel her warmth in my arms. But every time, Gonzo's reward and the abhorrent faces of those ten odd men stilled my heart once more. It's me. I want you to dig around a bit. Hmm. Try to make a section chief or something for the Prefecture or Metropolitan Police Department. That night, there wasn't any time to sleep. Gosh, we're actually in her chapter, and he's trying to still kick them out of their home. It just, it feels bad, man. It feels bad. I was thinking we were gonna wrap things up nicely. Maybe have a little bit of drama towards the end, but this is a lot of drama. A little bit more than I was expecting. Anyways, I'm gonna end the video here. I think this is a good stopping point. Uh, let's leave it off with him trying to figure out how to get them to move still. Maybe he'll defy his father. I don't know. It sounds like he can't now. It sounds like he's pretty screwed. But uh, we'll leave it off here. We'll see how things go next time. I'll see you guys then.